What's going on everybody, Paul Tech here, and welcome to my full review of the LG Stylo 4. Now I've owned this device for over a month, been using it as my daily driver, so sit back, relax, and let me share with you my experience with the LG Stylo 4. Kicking this off with design and build. So to the right hand side, you do got your power button. Now the right, left, top and bottom is made out of real metal, which is pretty awesome. To the left hand side, you have a tray there that does house your SIM card, as well as you can input a micro SD card for expandable storage. You also got your volume rockers up on top. Now my time of using the LG Stylo 4, the device feels real comfortable to hold in the hand. The power button, and the volume rockers are nice, tactile, and responsive. They're not loose feeling or cheap feeling or anything like that. To the bottom, you got your stylus there to the far corner, a single down firing speaker, Type-C charging port with Quick Charge 3.0, your microphone antenna band, as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, when it comes to the stylus placement with it being on the bottom of the Stylo 4, it has never fallen out once. I mean, I've used this without a case, with a case, and the stylus is nice and secure in my Stylo 4 and has never fallen out. Up on top, you got two antenna bands as well as your noise cancellation mic. Take a look at the back of the LG Stylo 4. You're getting a 13 megapixel instant focus with phase detection, autofocus as well, your LED flash, fingerprint sensor, and then LG branding to the bottom. Now this back cover is very glossy, reflective. It is plastic and it is prone to scratches. So if you're gonna be picking up a Stylo 4, I highly recommend a case of some type. I've done many case reviews on this channel. Link to these specific cases in the description below of this video. You're also getting a non-removable 3300 milliamp amp hour battery and I'll talk about battery life a little bit later on in this review. Overall it's a pretty nice design other than the fact that the back cover does get scratched rather easily and it does have some good even weight distribution. Moving on to display now. Now in my opinion the LG Stylo 4 has a fantastic display. I have no issues, no complaints when it comes to this display. All the wallpapers look fantastic, has great color reproduction, you know that nice 18 to 9 aspect ratio, 6.2 inch full HD plus full vision display. Screen resolution is going to be 1080 by 2160 and about 391 pixels per inch. You also got a 5 megapixel front facing camera and an LED notification light up on top. Now when it comes to the display, outdoors, indirect sunlight, in my experience, I can see the display perfectly fine. The auto brightness will basically crank itself up to about 100% if necessary and I get some good visibility outdoors on the Stylo 4. Now when it comes to watching YouTube videos, Netflix, Hulu, everything looks and runs perfectly fine on my Stylo 4. It's actually a really good experience watching those videos and movies on this large 6.2 inch full HD display. Now you got the option to watch an original. We're gonna get the black bars on the side or you can pinch in, zoom to fill the entire display. Now the top and bottom does get a little bit cut off, but you do get some pretty good viewing angles on the Stylo 4 as well. And all the videos I watched at 1080p, 60 frames per second, that's the highest resolution, ran perfectly fine, no blacking out issues. Now when it comes to the fingerprint sensor on the back of the Stylo 4. It actually works really good in my opinion. It pretty much unlocks each and every time. Now, is it the fastest I've used? No, but it is very accurate and a great security feature. Another feature I like about the fingerprint sensor, you can actually just swipe down and it'll drop down your status bar. You can get quick access to your toggles, your notification panel. So it almost works kind of like a trackpad at the back of the fingerprint sensor. Now, another security feature you're getting is facial recognition. So as you can see, you can see all my fingers on the style of four and it unlocks just by me looking at the device and it actually works pretty well. I did notice in low lit situations, sometimes it didn't work, but for the most part, it does work good. Now when it comes to 4G LTE, this is an area the Stylo 4 shines in. I mean, I had signal everywhere I went and you get extended range LTE. So signal reaches two times as far and penetrates through walls, four times better coverage in buildings than before with the 600 megahertz. That's what you got there. Phone calls were great on the Stylo 4. Caller said they heard me perfectly fine. And on Metro, you get the video calling feature, which is great. Now, when it comes to keyboard sensitivity, I mean, I send a lot of emails out. I send a lot of text messages. I probably do that then more than I make phone calls and keyboard sensitivity was Perfect, no issues there. Another way I like to send my messages out is by using the stylus. So if you actually just press on the microphone and then click on that middle option right there like a pen, you can actually just write out your messages, which is actually pretty cool. So if you don't want to write on your display, maybe your hands are dirty, maybe you're wearing gloves, use your stylus and you can just write out your messages 
Just like that, a very cool feature. I'll go over more of this stylus a little bit more in this review. Moving on to Wi-Fi connectivity. So this does connect to the five gigahertz Wi-Fi as well. I really had no issues connecting to Wi-Fi. It didn't disconnect on me at all. And when it comes to Bluetooth, you're actually getting Bluetooth 4.4 on this. As you can see, I'm gonna connect to the Timebox Mini and that's basically it, it connects. But Bluetooth was perfectly fine. For me now what's powering this device what's under the hood it is the qualcomm snapdragon 450 clocked at 1.8 gigahertz octa core and adreno 506 two gigs of ram as well when it comes to the sensors on this as you can see the style of 4 is packed pretty good with sensors so you're basically be able to watch 360 videos vr and you definitely got the gyroscope and i also want to share with you that this is on june 1st 2018 security patch so we are expecting july's and 8.1.0 oreo so you're going to get all those features out of the box that come with oreo i mean even the s9 plus that i'm filming this on is still on 8.0.0 so i'm sure we're going to see that next version of android on this as well now with lg devices you are getting lg skin on top of android which is basically lg's ux 7.0 now typically i would throw a launcher like nova launcher on my smartphones but I didn't really feel the need to I like the layout here if you slide to the side it gets you into your Google feed and basically just provides me all the information articles that are of my interest which is great you even have the Google search bar up on top so you don't even need the Google search bar on your home screen I also like the fact if you long press on the applications it does give you some options that are available which is another feature I like now, another feature I want to share with you because I use this all the time is called picture in picture. And this is a feature of Oreo. So if I exit out of YouTube, I will have a small window there of the YouTube video playing on my home screen. And this also works with maps. So I can basically um, jump to another application. I can do some Google searches. But what is very cool is if I open up my open applications here, I can actually open up two other apps now. So for instance, I got the Google Play Store open and then I got Twitter open and I got the YouTube video playing. And like I said, you can use this with maps as well. So you can actually have three applications open at the same time. And again, this feature actually works pretty well. Now, when it comes to multitasking on the Style of 4, again, it does have two gigs of RAM, and I know some people are gonna be like, that's just not enough for me. And that might be the case. It might not be enough for you. You might need a device that has more, but I think for a lot of consumers out there, two gigs of RAM and the 450 processor is gonna be sufficient. I mean, just for me, jumping from Facebook, Twitter, some Google searches, playing a couple games, um, it seems to run perfectly fine. Did I see some slowdown and stutter? Yes, if I have too much open but I usually just clear out the background apps and I'm good now when it comes to GPS this is another area where I had no issues and I remember on the first generation stylo GPS was a huge issue but using GPS I always got to my destination and I never lost location either now when it comes to underneath settings here you get a variety of options I mean this is packed to the gills with features you get NFC on this as well you're also getting Android beam so if you want to do your Google payments on your Android device you can definitely do so you're also getting a great feature here which is the dts x 3d surround and all you got to do i'm telling you just plug in a set of headphones and you can take advantage of this feature and you can basically customize the sound to your liking and you can also choose from some preset um, audio options that are available and this is a cool feature like i said if you pick up the style of four plug in those headphones definitely go into settings and you know get the sound quality to how you like good feature there now you also got some other options here for your home touch buttons and this was always a feature that i always liked about LG devices because they allow you to rearrange the on-screen buttons. As you can see to the bottom there, you got this action button here, which will drop down your status bar, provide some good one-handed operation as well as capture plus and Q slide. You also have the option to hide the home touch buttons. And this is a feature I use, as you can see, all the applications are set to hide the home touch button. So for instance, I'm in the Google Play Store, you don't see the on-screen buttons there unless I slide up, and then you can see the on-screen buttons and then they disappear. Now, if I wanna keep them, I just press that little dot to the side and they will stay on. Now, you also have the option to change the screen resolution. And I haven't seen this on many other devices other than like my S8 and S9, but you do got that available, which is gonna help with battery life. Now, you can also have mini view here. Now, mini view was on the previous stylo, but this is a good feature for those that want some good one-handed operation. 
and maybe the display with it being so large it is kind of hard to reach the top sometimes if you have smaller hands and all you got to do is um, just slide across your on-screen buttons there and then you can shrink down the display you can adjust the size of it and it works pretty good as you can see just sliding from one side uh, to the other it works good all right so you also got the internal storage on this which is 32 gigabytes of internal storage now you also have the option to input a micro sd card to expand the storage which is fantastic now when you input your micro sd card it is going to say you can only use it as portable storage not adoptable so some apps can be moved to the sd card but just not all of them all right, so you also have smart cleaning. And if you pick up your Stylo 4, I definitely recommend use this smart cleaning feature. It is definitely gonna help with overall performance and just help overall optimize your Stylo 4. And it works good. Like I said, definitely do this every you know week, two weeks. Um, definitely do this and it'll just help out your device. All right, game graphics now. So for those of you that are gamers that want to use your Stylo 4, you can actually have the option to adjust resolution and frame rate. So this is great for a game like PUBG, for instance, or if you're playing, I don't know, Roblox, and you notice you are getting some lag, just adjust the resolution and frame rate. And that should help with overall game performance as well. All right, so when it comes to the Geekbench 4 tests, for those that are interested, 750 single core score, 3,266 for the multi-core score, and 22 benchmark, does score this in at 70,234. Moving on to gaming on the LG Stylo 4, it was actually a pretty good experience, not a whole lot of negative to report back to you. For instance, a game like Sonic, which is one of my favorites, I was able to run it perfectly fine, no overheating. Temple Run, Subway Surfers, all these type of games are gonna run smooth and none of the games crashed on me. When it comes to the popular game like PUBG, I know everybody's playing this right now. Um, you're definitely gonna be able to play PUBG on the Stylo 4, either on low to medium graphic settings is probably gonna be best. And I did notice a little bit of um, some skip frame rates here and there, but nothing that's gonna hinder your gaming performance. So yeah, you'll definitely be able to play PUBG on the Stylo 4. Moving on to the single downfiring speaker. Now, this is an area where I like the placement of the speaker, but I wish it got a little bit louder, had a little bit more bass to it, but position is good but it's just not the best downfiring speaker, I should say, but it's not a terrible one either. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind when it comes to the downfiring speaker. And moving on to the cameras now. So you're getting that five megapixel front facing camera and then a 13 megapixel rear facing camera. Again, you're getting that face detection autofocus, a single LED flash, you got four times digital zoom on this. So this is gonna be an f2.4 aperture. And shutter speed, in my opinion, is a little on the slow side compared to some other smartphones. And then you got some different filters to choose from as well. Different modes, which is always good to see on a smartphone. So I would say photos, like eight out of 10 would come out good when I am taking photos on this. When it comes to video recording, it does a pretty good job as well. You got the steady recording feature on this, which is basically gonna provide some pretty good smooth frame rates when you are recording your videos. As you can see the different options you have there, the HDR, the steady recording, cheese shutter, you can add a signature as well. So like I said, you know, photos come out pretty good for the most part, as well as video and 1080p resolution. Now you also got something on this which is called Q Lens, and I think it needs a little bit more polishing, maybe even an update because it works, I would say about 80% of the time getting things correct. It, it'll do like a visual, a visual search, an Amazon search, and uh, sometimes it works, and and sometimes not so much. Now you're getting that five megapixel front facing camera. And what I really like about the front facing camera is the fact that you have a wide angle option. And I'll switch it up in just a moment so you can see just how much more you can fit in to your photos and videos as you can see there. You also get a portrait mode on this. And I actually think the portrait mode works pretty good as well. You get your gesture shot on this. So overall, it's a pretty good camera. If you're out taking photos in a day like how it looks where I'm filming right now, every is gonna come out looking good. Low light can get a little grainy, but actually not that bad. Here's some sample photos shot on the Stylo 4.
All right, and moving on to the stylus now. The stylus is a great feature, in my opinion, a great tool to have, and it works great. I mean, it just glides right across the display on the Stylo 4. Now, when it comes to the stylus, it's basically nothing is new, nothing has been added from last year. The Pop Memo, the Capture Plus, Gift Capture, and Pop Lens, those are all things we've had on the previous Stylo. Even going into settings, as you can see, there's really nothing new that has been added. So the only thing that's really new with the stylus is the position, and it is a little bit shorter than last year's stylus, but you can still assign whatever application that you choose when you pull out the stylus. I'll go through some of these features here that you have available. So for instance, Pop Memo. Now Pop Memo is actually pretty cool because you can just jot down a quick note, a quick memo, a quick reminder to yourself. And as you can see, um, the pen just works good. And you can also change up the color if you like. And then you can basically save this note in your gallery. Now moving on to another feature you have here. So for instance, you're in an article, you're on a website, you got Capture Plus here. Now I always love using Capture Plus to capture a screenshot. So like I said, I'm on the Metro PCS website. I wanna send this out, I'm gonna circle the price. And this price is actually pretty incredible in my opinion. I mean, you can get the Stylo 4 for such a low price right now, even for free when you pour it over. Um, but as you can see with this feature here, you can just write on wherever you are, whatever application, and then you can basically save it to the gallery, and then you can also share it out to wherever you feel. Now, when it comes to this one here, this is called Q Lens. So basically, this is gonna be like a magnifying glass, so it's just gonna make the print larger on whatever website or application you're on. So this can be definitely a good feature if maybe you have some poor visibility or just the writing, the text is small. You can also make it dark color as you can see there. Good stuff here, I really like that one. Now you have GIF, or I think it is called GIF Capture. Somebody corrected me in my unboxing video but you have this feature here. And like I said, this was on the previous Stylo as well. And you can basically do a short recording. So for instance, I'm on YouTube watching this video. I can make a quick couple second video as you can see there, and then I can stop it. And then it will be basically, I can save it to my gallery, I can edit it. All right, the last feature I wanna share with you is probably one of the most popular. It's called Screen Off Memo. So when your phone is off, you take out the stylus and then you can just jot down a quick note and save it to your gallery without ever opening up your phone. So again, you're getting some good features with the stylus. And I said this on my Stylo 3 review, you just gotta remember the stylus is there. And moving on to battery life on the Stylo 4. So again, a 3,300 milliamp hour battery. And this battery life is fantastic. I cannot kill this battery in a single day. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 450 processor is very battery efficient. And even you have these different battery modes. I never even used them. I kept them off. And still, I would get through a day, a day and a half off a single charge. So you're gonna get fantastic battery life. And when it comes to charging up your Stylo 4, you got Type-C charging on this. You got Quick Charge 3.0. So if you're concerned about battery life, let me tell you, you will have excellent battery life on the Stylo 4. Hi everybody, so that's pretty much it for my full review on the LG Stylo 4. And I know I was late on providing this review. I do apologize to you guys, but hopefully this did help you out if you are thinking about picking up a Stylo 4, if you haven't already. And like I said, I really like the Stylo 4. I think it's a fantastic smartphone. It definitely checks a lot of the boxes. Yeah, the back does scratch a little easy. Yeah, the speaker to the bottom might not be the best, but this is still a great option, especially for the low price you can pick this up for at Metro PCS. All right, everybody, let me know what you think about this review in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified for my next review. And I will talk to you guys on the next one. Bye.